Thank you very much, Ms. Mutanen. Excellencies, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, on behalf of the Parliament of the Republic of Azerbaijan, I wish to cordially greet all parliamentary delegations attending the 14th Summit of Women Speakers of Parliament. And I would like to express my gratitude to the Chair of the Senate of the Republic of Uzbekistan, Ms. Tanzila Narbaeva, and President of the Interparliamentary Union, Duarte Pacheca, for organizing this important event. Today, we women speakers of parliament have the opportunity to discuss the issues of global concern. Honorable colleagues, it is known that COVID-19 had a devastating impact on the world community in all respects. It exposes serious shortcomings in terms of social justice, equal economic opportunities, and gender equality. COVID-19 has also negatively impacted the achievements of our societies. However, Despite the negative effects, COVID-19 also gave us a chance to see, to learn from our mistakes and correct them. Today, the global community slowly entered the post-pandemic recovery period. This is the very moment when we have to act firmly and immediately. Without falling into the trap of unconditional economic recovery, we need to strengthen the mechanisms that will deliver socially inclusive economy based on equal rights, opportunities, and protection. I strongly believe that being a bridge between the governments and societies, parliaments have an important role to play in this context. It is not only about holding the governments accountable, but rather working together hand in hand for the common goal and acting as a focal point of conceited efforts of elected representatives, government, and civil society. Distinguished colleagues, I believe that one of the important lessons that COVID-19 taught us is the significance of identifying risks preemptively and working on them. Thus, climate change has already been turning into one of the most acute challenges of our time, and we have to deal with it now. Another demand of today is the wide use of green technologies, and uh, we should act adequately. It should be taken into consideration that the use of green technologies will provide environmental protection and create new perspectives. No doubt, it will have a positive effect on all dimensions of sustainable development. Ladies and gentlemen, COVID-19 taught us another valuable lesson. Global challenges require global solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recall the initiatives of the President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mr. Ilham Aliyev, as the Chairman of the Non-Aligned Movement, aimed at addressing the negative consequences of the pandemic, as well as the post-pandemic global recovery. Initiatives such as ensuring equitable, affordable, timely, and universal access for all countries to vaccines, establishing the United Nations High-Level Panel on Global Recovery from COVID-19, were intended to strengthen international solidarity and cooperation in the fight against the pandemic. They received broad recognition and support. Azerbaijan acknowledged the importance of interparliamentary cooperation on a global scale. As the chair of the non-aligned movement, Azerbaijan put forward the initiative to develop parliamentary dimension of the movement. Thus, the parliamentary network of the NAM was inaugurated in Madrid in November 2021. The parliamentary network is ready to contribute to common goals and is going to actively engage with other parliamentary organizations, first and foremost with the Interparliamentary Union, in finding solutions for the issues of global concern. As a chair of the network, I underline this position at the Baku Conference of the Network in June this year. Distinguished colleagues, it is undeniable that without peace and security, it is impossible to speak about sustainable development and prosperity. Unfortunately, many countries have experienced it. We in Azerbaijan know this harsh reality very well. 20% of Azerbaijan's internationally recognized territories were held under occupation by our neighbor Armenia for 30 years. All our cities and villages, historical, cultural, and religious sites were destroyed in these territories. About one million of our compatriots became refugees and IDPs, and 52% of them were women. After liberating its territories from Armenian occupation in 2020, Azerbaijan has started the large-scale restoration and reconstruction works in these territories. 
Liberated territories are declared a green energy zone. Smart cities and smart villages are being built. It is in line with the above mentioned comment on the use of green technologies. However, a large number of mines planted by Armenia in these territories is a serious impediment to the process. Today, the lives of our returning IDPs, including a woman and children, are under serious threat. In the case of Azerbaijan, as in the case of many other conflict-affected countries, the problem of mines being a humanitarian issue represents a serious challenge to the efforts of economic recovery and sustainable development. And I strongly believe our interparliamentary dialogue should also focus on these issues. Thank you for your attention.